In this snippet, we're going to talk about, uh, this is specifically a, uh, a video for TMI Hospitality uh, with respect to the thermostat configuration and how to go ahead and configure a thermostat. Now, what we've got here is basically a standard version 2.71 um, Cassia thermostat that, uh, that right now, if you get into the thermostat menu by pressing the three bottom buttons and the up arrow, um, we'll go down to number three, diagnostic test, um, and scroll down to number five, network state. As you'll see, you'll see there's no room number in there. It's set for a defaulted type one, which is a one heat, one cool profile. The fan speeds are set for one, and everything else right now um, is showing a zero. So first order of business, um, in the configuration guide that's part of the system manual for each site, um, we're going to want to go through and get this thermostat configured. Now you're going to need to do this every time you get a new thermostat as a replacement under warranty or if you're going to order a new one that comes in from the factory, you're going to go ahead and have to implement these settings. So the first thing that we're going to want to go do is get into the main menu and we're going to go to number one, stack configuration and press select. And one of the first things that we're going to want to do is set stat type. And you're going to go ahead and press select. And this right now uh, is where you decide what type of unit um, we're interfacing with. It's pretty important right now to make sure that we've got this set up properly. In the residence in locations, predominantly we are set up as a one heat, one cool type of scenario. Now, if there's something separate, uh, a unit's a heat pump, or this has now been expanded out to a, a courtyard or another type of property that's running a PTAC unit, it's important for us to come down and select, um, in this case, if it was a heat pump, uh, where the valve energizes on heat, or a heat pump where the valve energizes on cool, or it has two stages of, of cooling or heat, um, we need to identify that. There's a one-page summary that shows the different thermostat profiles that are in the Cassia thermostat and telling you which relays are going to be engaged. So it's important, and you can find this information from the system manual for any piece of equipment. It'll tell you what it is and then how it's being sequenced. But, you know, in majority of the cases, the thermostat comes defaulted as a one heat, one cool. That's a profile that will typically operate the equipment, now depending unless you have a heat pump or something else that's specific. So in this particular case, I want to go ahead and select one heat, one cool. I press select. Next, it's going to ask me is for my fan speeds. Well, typically we're set up in the residence ends. Predominantly, almost all of them are set up with, they were four-wire systems. We put an add-a-wire device on there, now a five-wire system. And traditionally, we're only going to have one fan speed. So we'll go ahead and highlight one and press continue. So then, once we've got that set up into the system, the next thing we're going to want to go do now is go ahead and set the buttons down here, or button three. So we're going to get in the thermostat menu. We're going to press stack configuration and press select. We're going to scroll down to number five, button configuration, and press select. Now, this is going to tell you to set button one, button two, or button three. Now, going left to right, this is button one, this is button two, button three. What we're trying to set now is button three, which is the bottom right button, which is going to say what thermostat modes do we want to have available. When the new thermostat comes out of the factory, it's going to give you the ability to put it into auto, heat, cool, and off. In this particular case, we're going to want to just enable the cool, heat, and off profile, which is what TMI Corporate is asking for. So we're going to scroll down to set button three, which is the bottom right button. We're going to go ahead and press select. Now it's going to give me a menu of options. Now, stat mode full right now is giving you all the options of cool, heat, auto, and off. What I want to go down now is stat mode manual. I'm going to press select. And if I exit all the way up by hitting the bottom left button until I get back to the main screen, I'm going to go and toggle this bottom right button, also known as button 3, and we're going to see now it's cool, heat, and off. If I keep going through, it's just cool, heat, and off, and that's the profile that we want it. So that's how you configure this button 3 to get the desired outcome that we want uh, for the guests to go through that. Now, the next thing we're going to want to go do is get back in that thermostat menu. We're going to go back to stack configuration, and then we're going to scroll down now to occupancy. And under this parameter, we're going to want to come down and verify on the exit delay. I'll press select. The exit delay now is set for 15 minutes as a default from the factory. Well, the settings now from TMI Corpman is that we want to run that exit delay to 120 minutes. So you're going to go and have to hit this up arrow until we get to 120 minutes on the thermostat. So you just got to keep toggling this button up um, until we get to the desired number that we want. 
and then we'll be able to have this set up in the proper configuration, meaning that it's going to take basically two hours after the door closes and senses there's nobody in the room for it to enable a simple setback. So right now I've got it set for 120 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and press select. Okay, so I've set up now the exit delay. The next thing I'm going to want to be able to go do is go into number one, the differential, and press select. Now, I'm going to want to scroll down now in my deep setback. So what this is going to tell me is that, and press select, is that it comes as defaulted from the factory at six degrees. This means when it goes on its time-based standpoint, that when it, when it emulates as if someone had checked out of the room, it would let the thermostat drip six degrees off of its set point. Well, what we want to go do now is we want to change that to four degrees. So we're going to go ahead and move that back up. I'm sorry, hit the down arrow to get that back to four degrees. And that's a desired setting. It's at four degrees and press select. Okay, so now we've set up the, uh, the, the, set the exit delay to 120 minutes. Now we've set the deep setback differential, the amount that we're going to let the thermostat drift when we believe the room is unoccupied and unrented to four degrees off of the set point. And now the next thing we want to go do now is going to go down to where we have um, our deep setback delay. So we're going to go ahead down to number seven here, press select, and go down and look for the deep setback delay. Right now it comes in the factory as zero and in the off mode. Now we want to enable that for 12 hours. So we're going to go ahead and press this up arrow until we get to the 12 hours and press select. Okay, so now we've gone and, got it and, had you, and enabled that. Now, the only thing else that we need to be able to go tell it now is the, uh, is the set point limits. So now we want to be able, be able to put in the thermostat how high and how low do we want to be able to have um, the guests have control of the thermostat. So if I exit all the way out, back to the main menu, and I may be repetitive here, but it's just trying to give you the opportunity to understand how we work in and out of these menus. It's always pressing the three bottom buttons, and the up arrow, and that'll get us the main menu. If you scroll up, make sure you're on number one stack configuration, press select, and now you can scroll down or you can scroll up. I scroll up only because we're looking for number 16, which is set point limits. We're gonna go ahead and press select, and now what we wanna do is be able to set the upper limit. So I press select on the upper limit. It's set for 85 degrees from the factory and uh, from corporate, uh, TMI corporate, they want it set to 80 degrees. So you wanna bring this down to 80 degrees and press select. By doing so, the guest will not be able to set the set point higher than 80 degrees. Now we'll choose lower limit. Press select, and now we're gonna move that back up to 65 degrees. That's the status that uh, the TMI corporate wants, press select. So now we've got a range of between 65 and 80, and the guest has got full control between that range on heat or cool um, within those parameters. Now the next thing we need to set now is the cool set point. And what the cool set point is, this is the number that we're going to go ahead and set the thermostat to in the cool mode uh, when it's in deep setback. So as an example now, we want this to be set to 72 degrees. So we're going to bring this down to 72 degrees. And what this means is that if someone has been in the room and left and the door shut and the door contact says to the motion sensor or the thermostat that the door closed that verifies now for the next two hours that nobody comes back into that room, that room now will go into a setback, which means it's going to drift three degrees off of the set point that the guest had left in there, say it was 67 degrees. And then the secondary timer is going to start for an additional 12 hours now to verify if, in fact, anybody else is in that room. And if it goes for a 12-hour period where there is no other motion event, then the thermostat will auto-correct itself as if believing that the guest had checked out. And then if it was in the cool mode, it's going to default the temperature to 72 degrees and employ that four-degree deep setback differential that we had put on there. Now, we're also going to set this up for heat, the heat set point, if the thermostat had been in heat mode. The desired right now heat setting is 70. So in the heat mode, we're going to press select here, which means that if the guest was running the heat and they left and this scenario went through where there was nobody in the room for two hours after they left and then an additional 12 hours, it would autocorrect. Say they had it set at 75 degrees. It would autocorrect that thermostat back to 70 and then apply that four degree deep setback differential. So all it means is that that temperature is going to drift above or below that 70 degree temperature. So those are some of the basic parameters that we're setting up in the thermostat. 
there is one other item that we need to address, and this is pretty important now because um, in the configuration menu here, under Stack Configuration, you would press Select, and we're going to scroll all the way down to Heat Source. Now, we had come back through and did an upgrade to the firmware to run with a specific profile on these, uh, these units at the residence ends. Now, if you go to Heat Source and press Select, you're going to see a prompt for either electric or gas. Well, the systems that we put in there with the Attawire, normally were four wire systems before, are now five wires with the Attawire. But this unit has a specific profile that emulates almost as if it's on gas heat. And what was happening before was that the unit would come on and the fan would engage first. But the toasters, or so to speak, the electric heat would not engage for a period of a minute or two. So there was a bunch of cold air coming out of the register before the heat would come on. And then by us engaging this electric heat profile, it would put the fan speed to high internally. Even though it's a single speed wired, internally the unit has a high speed fan. So we had a double whammy effect in which we were getting cold air or lukewarm air coming out of the discharge grill. So we created a new thermostat profile, new in the firmware here, and on your units, and this version 2.71 firmware, which is on here, you need to set this up and go to gas and press select. That means it's going to emulate a profile, which is going to be a delayed setting on the blower, so it comes on at the proper time with the heat, and the fan's going to run at a low speed internally, which will give us the optimal discharge temperature coming out of the grill. So it's just something important to remember that and these are all things that are listed on the thermostat configuration sheet. But these are things that we want to make sure as we go through here that we enable and set up. So quick summary, what we want to make sure though is you go to stack configuration and in that you're going to find things such as the operating mode, which needs to be set to standalone. So it's important there that your thermostat is in the standalone mode and you press select, it's going to go through and power up. And I only caution you this is that in some of the basic troubleshooting procedures that we go through, uh, all that standalone means is that you're not tied to any type of network system. This thermostat itself and the devices that are programmed to it are a self-contained system that are trying to control the unit and the setback in the room. So we just need to make sure now that the unit or the thermostat recognizes the fact of what profile it needs to be operating in. So as I go back into the stack configuration mode, I go back to operating mode. When the item is highlighted, that's the profile that we're running. So we want to make sure we're running standalone, which is the proper format. As we go back through here, there's opportunities for the button configuration that we talked about and how to set those buttons. Um, the occupancy that we talked about when we were trying to set the exit delay, as well as the, uh, as well as the deep setback delay. And then as we continue to scroll through here, um, there, was an there was an opportunity for us to go back through and set up the, uh, the set point limits, which also included the upper lower limit, the cool set point, and the heat set point, which are used to autocorrect the thermostat to those values when the, and it believes that the room is emulating a checked out room. So... At the end of the day, it's a brief summary. There are written instructions provided on the thermostat configuration setup. This is just a little short snippet to help you kind of walk through some of those settings. Um, if you do that, then you're going to have a system that's going to be operating properly, um, and you should be in good shape.